Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ back at the Meg's Point Nature Center. Today's program is a craft activity that you can do at home. And if you're going to take this on, I hope that you take a picture and send it to me when you're all done, because I would really like to see what you come up with for today's activity. Now, what we're going to be doing is making our own butterflies. It's a really pretty simple program. You need a glue stick. I use a lot of glue sticks. You need a pencil sharpener, some crayons, and you remove the paper from the crayon. You'll need some wax paper, a pair of scissors, and this is where you need your parents' help or an adult. Scissors and an iron. Okay, so that's what you need to start. So we're going to be making butterflies and everybody hopefully knows that butterflies are super bright and super colorful. So we can get really creative with our butterflies color. So you're going to take two pieces of wax paper. I'm going to angle this so you can watch what I do here because this is going to be lots of fun. So butterflies in nature come in many different colors. And why do they come in so many different colors? You would think that all those bright colors make it hard to camouflage, hard to hide themselves. But actually, it's easier for them to camouflage when they're brightly colors because if you think about where it is that they spend a lot of time, it's on brightly colored flowers. So when a butterfly is hanging out on a brightly colored flower, if it were dark and uh, not really brightly colored, it would really stand out. So when they're on a flower, it helps if you're brightly colored. So what we're doing here is we're just shaving our uh, crayon, just sharpening your crayon like you normally would to get a nice sharp edge. And we're going to use some different colors here. Actually, the harder crayons work a little bit better. The softer crayons, you get these long strings. The harder crayon, you get smaller bits and pieces. Either way works. I like a little of both. Um, so we're going to be doing a few different things here. Now you can do it all over. Do the same colors all over. You can do a few uh, different colors in one place over another. So I've got this sort of teal color that I'm going to put up on the top. And then we'll do uh, this color here, which I'm not sure what you would call this. Maybe this is more teal and the other is more aqua. I think this sharpener works a little better. You don't need a whole lot of the color. And a little bit in the center helps as well. So we're going to do some down the middle here. A little more over here. So if you notice, I'm making the general shape of a butterfly's wing. Okay. Butterflies have four wings. So they go like that. I think someone has a joke. Why wouldn't the butterfly go to the dance? I don't know. All right, so now we've got our shavings of crayon. And now you put the second piece of wax paper over the top and you use your iron. It doesn't have to be exact. You're going to use your iron to melt. So you don't want the iron on the hottest temperature. It will melt too fast and blend the colors together more. I like the colors a little bit separated like the pattern on a butterfly's wing. So you can manipulate a little bit better if it's a little cooler, but your parents will help you with this. So, or an adult, you could do this with your teachers as well. Maybe your babysitter, whoever is around that's an adult that can 
use an iron safely. Okay, so now we've melted the wax pretty nicely. And I have one that's already cool because you want to let it cool down. So the next thing you're going to do is this one is melted and cooled. You're going to fold it in half. So the colors are approximately overlapping each other. And now you're going to cut it out. Now there are a hundred, over 180,000 species of uh, butterflies in the world. So you can't really go wrong with your butterfly's color. Even the shape of the wing, you can't go wrong with that. So we've cut out. Now the reason we fold it over, it's a quick and easy way to get matching wings. All right. So the next part, you don't have to do it this way. You could use some construction paper, a stick, anything you want to make a butterfly's body. Remember, they're an insect, so they have three body segments. Head, thorax, abdomen. So we've got our three segments. We're going to put that right down the middle. And now you have, if you hold this up to the light, which I always like to hang these in the window, sort of like a stained glass windowed butterfly. Here's one that I made a little earlier. Okay. So this is a really simple project. Again, you can't go wrong. Butterflies come in every color um, imaginable, every shape of wing. They have long, thin wings, short, wide wings. So lots of different colors. You can hang this up. It will make a really nice stained glass window. Um, what makes a butterfly's wing so colorful? Let's bring this back and see if it's cooled enough. Are scales. Butterfly's wings are covered with scales. And those scales refract light differently from one another. So you get lots of different colors. The reason that they need to be colorful is they're really trying to not only camouflage, but they use that to attract one another. So the boys and girls will attract each other with their colorful wings. And they also use it to keep from being eaten by predators. So those bright colors in nature usually mean that something is not edible. And that's why the butterfly's wings will keep them from being eaten. Because if a predator sees them, they see all that bright color and they say, oh, that probably doesn't taste good. So they're going to stay away from the brightly colored butterfly. And there's another one. So you can do more colors. You can do less colors. Remember, though, that you're melting the crayon so the colors will blend together. Actually, you could go this way as well. You could go either direction. I think that one looks better to me this way. Um, if you put too many different colors on, the, they will all blend together and it may start turning brown or black, which not quite as pretty as all the bright colors if they stay a little bit. Uh, separated. All right, let me turn this so I can see if there are any questions. Let's see. Like this idea much better than capturing butterflies. Yeah, I don't suggest you go out and capture the butterfly. Um, and I don't suggest that you buy mounted butterflies. So often you see these you know, in a nice frame, a butterfly that's in there, it's really beautiful and colorful, some tropical butterfly. They say that they collect them after the butterfly dies. Most butterflies only live 72 hours or so, uh, or a week. But I, I still, I just don't like the idea of, because they may be collecting them while they're alive, they get a more intact butterfly. So, um, are you going to have monarch butterflies tagging in September? So we're not sure if, we're, if we'll be able to this year. It may be a virtual thing where I'll have volunteers out 
doing the tagging and we'll film it and, and you can watch it. Um, it's one of those things that we don't know when we'll be able to do groups of people. So we're being really cautious about it. Um, but as soon as we are able to, to do programs again, uh, we'll let you know. So here's how I did the, the body of the butterfly. It's really quite simple. I just do a circle for the head, do an oval for the abdomen, and then I do sort of a longer cone shape for the thorax. Make that head a little larger. Really quite simple, and then you cut this out with scissors. Um, we have done it where, again, you use a stick uh, for the body. You can use a clothespin for the body. Sometimes you could just cut the body out um, of the wax paper. So coming up, I will be doing uh, programs on insects as soon as our garden gets a little more in bloom and we get more insect activity out in the garden. We'll be doing some insect programs. I would like to do our build a bug, a bug program for you. And one thing that, that my butterfly doesn't have that it needs are antennas. So if you can get some um, toothpicks or something really thin that can act as a uh, antenna. Or they are insects, so they need antenna. And we'll put that right on there. And then that can go right into the window. All right, any questions so far? So this is a quick and simple project. You can make lots of them. I've already made, you know, three here. You bring these over. So a fun activity, especially on a rainy day, although it hasn't started raining here at the park yet. <clears throat> Losing my voice. Um, we do expect some rain this afternoon. So this is a nice indoor project that you can do and you can put it in your window and it really shines the light, looks really cool when it shines right through here. Actually, let me grab, I have a light over here. Let's bring this around and I'll show you, give you an idea how bright this can get. So if we go over here, that's really bright right now. And now we can show you what it would look like if we're held up in a window. Okay, so you get some really cool colors going. This one's got a lot more color in it, so it looks a little different. And don't worry if the, if the wax doesn't go everywhere when you're melting the crayon, it actually looks neat that way. All right. Do we have any questions? The answer to the previous question. It was a mothball, so the butterflies weren't invited. Very cool. <laughs> okay. I'm not seeing any questions. I hope you all continue to enjoy these programs. Remember, you can see all of our past programs on our website, megspointnaturecenter.org, in the Virtual Learning Center. You can also visit YouTube, Megspoint Nature Center YouTube's 
YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe, follow us, and like us on Facebook. That helps let your friends know how much you're enjoying the programs, and hopefully they'll join in and uh, watch and learn. I'm going to really encourage you to continue to watch these programs, even though school's getting out. It's still a great chance for you to learn. You can learn some fun activities. You can learn some things to do when you're out hiking in the woods. You don't have to tune in live, but if you do tune in live, I appreciate questions and comments. That's one of the things I really miss most about doing public programs is I don't have any interaction with the public, so I don't know how you're enjoying um, the programs. But hopefully everyone's still having a good time. I'm having fun doing it. I have lots more programs to go. Remember, tomorrow at 2 o'clock we'll be visiting another state park. Probably Dinosaur State Park. Unless something else comes up, it'll be Dinosaur. Um, you know, we get these educational opportunities like the lobster this morning. And you just got to take It's a teachable moment. You got to use it. So that's what we did this morning. Let me just check for any new questions. No questions. All right, so a little bit of shorter program today, but it's a simple little craft that you can do, and maybe you'll learn a little bit more about butterflies. I will do an entire program on butterflies once we have them out in the garden, and I hope that you tune in for that as well. So thank you again. I'm Ranger Russ from the Meg's Point Nature Center.